All right, everyone, so get this. Remember all those futuristic, like, sci-fi concepts, you know, the ones we thought were years away? Mm -hmm. Buckle up. Yeah. Because today's deep dive, it's all about Llama 3.2. Okay. And let me tell you, the future of AI, way closer than you think. Yeah, it really is. We're talking like a huge E leap forward. Huge is an understatement. Yeah. I think uh, we're breaking down two fascinating documents, actually. Oh, yeah. Llama 3.2 revolutionizing edge AI and vision with open customizable models. Okay. That one's hot off the press from Meta AI themselves. Nice. And uh, the release of Llama 3.2, it's a look at its potential impact. Okay, so we're talking AI that's not just smarter, right. but it's more accessible. Yeah, that's the key here. Mm. Llama 3.2 is all about bringing the power of AI directly to your devices. We're talking mm. phones, laptops, even those smart toasters you've got your eye on. Right. This is what we call edge AI. Okay, edge AI. Yeah. So for those of us who don't speak fluent tech, what does that actually mean for like my daily life? So imagine this, you're scrolling through a news feed mm -hmm. and it seems eerily tailored to your interests. <laughs> you're flowing. Right, right now it's probably happening on some distant server farm. Yeah. Crunching your data in the cloud. Right. Edge AI brings that processing power directly to your device. Wow. It's like having a mini supercomputer in your pocket. So faster processing, Andy, my data stays put. Exactly. I'm liking the sound of this already. Exactly. And it's not just about speed and privacy. Okay. Think about parts of the world with limited internet access. Edge AI could be a game changer, bringing the power of AI to regions that have traditionally been left behind. That's incredible. Yeah. But hold on. The source also mentioned something like vision LLMs. What is that? Some kind of AI that can actually see? You got it. Whoa. This is where things get really interesting. Okay. Vision LLMs can process and understand images, not just text. Wow. So imagine snapping a photo of a complicated graph. Okay. And your phone, powered by Llama 3.2, instantly breaks it down into this easy-to-understand format. Okay, that's just straight out of a sci-fi movie. Oh, no. No more struggling to decipher those tiny charts and presentations. Exactly. Are you telling me my phone will be able to understand what it's looking at just like we do? Essentially, yes. Yeah. But instead of just passively viewing these images, your phone could use vision LLMs to interact with the world in a whole new way. Okay. Imagine pointing your phone at a restaurant menu okay. in a foreign country, yeah, and it instantly translates it for you. Wow. Highlighting the dishes you probably enjoy based on like your dietary preferences and stuff. All right, you've officially blown my mind. So we're not just talking about smarter phones. We're talking about phones that can actually understand the world around them. I know. This is huge. It is huge, and we're just scratching the surface here. Wow. But before we dive into the like even wilder possibilities. Oh, okay. Let's take a closer look at the technology behind all of this. Okay, let's unpack this a bit more. How exactly does Llama 3.2 achieve this level of speed and intelligence, especially on something as compact as a smartphone? Okay, so we've established that Llama 3.2 is seriously next level stuff. But how does it actually work? It's like cramming all the power of a massive data center yeah. onto something that fits in my back pocket. Well, it's not magic, although right. it might feel like it. Right. One of the key advancements is how Llama 3.2 leverages uh, something okay. called model compression. Okay. Essentially, they've found ways to make these AI models significantly smaller okay. and more efficient without sacrificing performance. So it's like shrinking down a superhero. Exactly. Same amazing powers, just a more compact package. Exactly. And this has huge implications for accessibility. Smaller models mean they require less processing power in memory. Right. Which means they can run smoothly on devices that might have struggled with, you know, previous AI models. That's what's so exciting about this. It's not just about making AI smarter. Right. It's about making it available to everyone. Precisely. And this ties into another crucial aspect of Llama 3.2. Okay. It's open source. Oh, wow. Meta is basically giving developers around the world the keys to this powerful AI engine, encouraging them to experiment, innovate, find new applications we haven't even dreamed of yet. Okay, that's a lot of trust to put in the hands of, oh, potentially anyone with a laptop. It makes me think about the potential risks here. Sure. What's stopping someone from, you know, using this power for less than noble purposes? That's the million dollar question. Right. And it's something that Meta has clearly addressed. Okay. Remember the document mentioned Llama Guard 3? Yeah. 
That's their system level safety net. Okay. Designed to filter out any harmful or biased content. So it's like having a built in safety inspector, making sure Llama 3.2 is used responsibly. Yeah. In a nutshell, yes. It's a multi layered approach that combines technical safeguards with ethical considerations. Right. They're taking a proactive approach to responsible AI development. Okay. Which is crucial. I'm glad to hear that. But with a technology this powerful, it feels like we're constantly playing catch up with the like the potential downsides. It's a valid concern. Right. And it's a conversation we need to be having constantly, I think, as AI evolves. Yeah. But let's shift gears for a moment and talk about the positive impact. Hmm. The incredible potential that Llama 3.2 <laughs> unlocks. Okay. Imagine a world where education is truly personalized where AI tutors adapt to your unique learning style. Wow. Using real-time feedback from, like, your yeah. expressions right. engagement. Wait, so instead of just staring at a screen, right. AI could be, like, reading our reactions and actually tailoring the lesson to how we're processing the information? Yeah. That's NOS-level learning. Absolutely, and that's just one example. Think about healthcare. Okay. Doctors using AI-powered tools to diagnose diseases earlier and more accurately right. based on medical imaging. Okay. Or imagine architects using vision LLMs to design safer, more sustainable buildings by simulating real-world conditions. Okay, now I'm really seeing the potential here. Yeah. We're not just talking about incremental improvements. Oh, mm -hmm. We're talking about fundamental shifts in how we approach education, healthcare, yeah. even things like urban planning. It's about using AI to augment human capabilities yeah. to tackle challenges that have seemed insurmountable for so long. Right. And the beauty of it is that with an open source approach, the possibilities are limitless. Limitless is right, but all this potential, it's yeah. a lot to wrap your head around. It is. What would you say is the most important thing for people to understand about Llama 3.2? What's the key takeaway here? That's a great question. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest takeaway is that this isn't just another tech announcement. It's it's a pivotal moment in the evolution of artificial intelligence. Wow. Llama 3.2 is a sign that we're entering a new era where AI is no longer confined to labs and data centers. Right. But is becoming increasingly integrated into our daily lives. So it's not a question of if AI will reshape our world, but how. Precisely. And with an open source approach like Meta's, yeah. we have this unique opportunity yeah. to collectively shape that future. I like the sound of that. Okay, before we get completely lost in the future of AI-powered toasters and self-driving cars, right. let's bring it back to the present for a moment. What does Llama 3.2 actually mean for us, the everyday users, right now? Okay, so we've talked about the mind-blowing potential, yes. the incredible advancements, yeah. even the potential pitfalls. Yeah. But let's bring it back down to earth for a second. Okay. What does Llama 3.2 mean for you, yeah. the everyday person? Sure. Here? Well, I think um, it's about getting ready for a world where... AI is just woven into the fabric of our lives, mm -hmm. but also about realizing that we have more agency than ever before. Agency? How so? We remember the whole edge AI concept. Yeah. It means your phone, yeah. your laptop, your smart devices. They're not just passive tools anymore. Okay. They're becoming active participants in your experience. Wow. Powered by AI that lives on those devices. So instead of being bombarded with ads and recommendations that feel like they're from another planet, right. maybe AI will actually be able to understand my preferences mm -hmm. and provide me with like truly helpful insights. You're getting it. Okay. But it's more than just personalized recommendations. Okay. Think about things like accessibility tools. Okay. That can help people with disabilities interact with technology in new ways. Okay. Or Imagine AI-powered assistants that can help you learn new skills. Wow. Plan your day. Okay. Or even manage your finances more effectively. I'm picturing a world where AI is actually helping us to be more productive. Yeah. More creative and more informed. Right. That's a far cry from the doom and gloom scenarios some people are predicting. Precisely. And that's the beauty of open source development. Right. It's not just about the technology itself. Okay. It's about the collective effort to shape how that technology is used. That's such a powerful idea. Mm -hmm. It's about everyone coming together to create a future where AI enhances our lives, yeah. not just replaces them. Right. And that brings us back to the point we made earlier about Meta's Llama Guard 3. Right. We've talked about the potential for bias and misuse, mm -hmm. but Meta's focus on system level safety, yeah. it's a critical step in the right direction. It is. It's about building safeguards into the technology itself. So yeah. it's not just about 
reacting to problems after they arrive. Exactly, like a built-in conscience. Right. Making sure AI is used for good, not just for profit or power. Right, but beyond those safeguards, it's really about us. Sure. The users mm. making conscious choices about how we interact with this technology. Exactly. We have a responsibility to be informed consumers. Okay. To be critical thinkers. Right. And to use our voices to shape the future of AI. Right. In a way that benefits everyone. And that brings us to like a crucial point here. Okay. We're not just talking about AI as like a separate entity. Right. But as a tool that reflects our own values and aspirations. It's like a mirror showing us back our own potential, our own anxieties, wow. our own hopes for the future. So the question isn't just what will AI do for us, mm. but what will we do with AI? And that's the question we leave you with today, our listeners. Mm -hmm. As we dive deeper into this new era of AI, remember that we're all part of this story. Yes. We're the ones who will shape the future, okay. whether we create it or consume it. It's true. Well, this isn't just about Llama 3.2. It's about the future of technology mm -hmm. and how it will shape our lives. Yeah. And that's a wrap on our deep dive into Llama 3.2. This is a good one. Thanks for joining us.